Greetings to all peoples and kingdoms of Vada, and welcome to Shield Maiden of Vada. Every story has its own wise man of legend, who seemingly has seen everything and is still living to talk about it. Tolkien's walks are no exception. Yet Kiran and the Shipwright is not simply the oldest living being to walk Middle Earth. There was so much more th to this elf of the sea, this beacon of light amidst every storm, this gatekeeper to the heavenly realm of Valinor. Today, on Show Minutes of Honor, we're going to explore Kieran's story. We're especially going to see how the virtues of loyalty, service, and sacrifice played out over the course of his long life. So sit back and let this shield maiden be your guide into the wonderful world of Middle Earth. Long before the first age of the world dawned, there were the years of the trees. It was in this dawning of time that Kieran, known then as Norway, was born. His exact date of birth is not known, but it is possible that he was among the first elves who awoke at Quivanian. Along with the other elves of his kin, the Teleri, Noe made a long journey west to seek the light of the heavenly realm of Valinor. Yet when his leader, Elwe, disappeared after having been enchanted by, by the Maya Melion, Noe demonstrated astonishing loyalty and determination by diligently searching for Elwe. Even when the Valor came to escort the elves across the sea to the lands of Valinor, where they might see and live among the beauty of the two trees and the light, Norway refused to give up his search. In the absence of Elwe, the Teleri who still waited were forced to take Elwe's brother, Orwe, as the leader, and they settled down to wait for the promised return of the Valor to escort them in their journey to Valinor. It was at this time that Norway became known as Kirden. For in his long wait, he began to walk at building and sailing ships, and none could rifle him in his craft. Therefore he was called Kirin, which means shipwright in Sindarin. Yet even in the midst of his growing fame and reputation, he continued his search for Elwe, determining not to abandon his leader when the glorious lands of Valinor were being offered as their home. Because of his loyalty and sacrifice, Kieran came too late to the shores of the Phallus. We can imagine his pain and betrayal as he watched the island transport of Tor Eldersea disappear in a glimmer of light. He who had labored so long and with such love and loyalty. He who has sought only to help his fellow elves and bring them all into the glory of the two trees together. How could the Valor desert him like this? In a desperate attempt to join his kin, Kieran was ready to embark on a ship of his own when the voice of the Valor themselves came to him. And the voice warned him not to attempt this peril, for his strength and skill would not be able to build any ship able to dare the winds and waves of the great sea for many long years yet. Abide now that time, for when it comes then will your work be of utmost worth, and it will be remembered in song for many ages after. I obey, Kieran answered, and then it seemed to him that he saw, in a vision maybe, a shape like a white boat, shining above him, it sailed west through the air, and as it dwindled in the distance it looked like a star of so great a brilliance that it cast a shadow of Kirin upon the strand where he stood. And so Kirin began his life as Lord of the Phallus. His dwelling was on the shores of Beleriand, his wall was over the people who had chosen to stay, and his craft was in shipbuilding. There also he built the havens of the Phallus two great walled elven cities. There he and his people, Philothlum, found gems and sent them to King Thingol of Doria. During the wars of the First Age, the Phallus was sieged. Círdan sent his people to assist the elven leaders in several of the large battles that took place in those times. Círdan also became great friends with Finrod Felagorn, and he continued showing loyalty and service to Thingol. Yet Círdan did not resolve his help only for those to whom he swore official allegiance. The havens were open to any who needed shelter, and his wars of wisdom were granted to anyone who needed advice. He came to the help of Fingorn during the wars of the Nordor. His havens offered shelter and refuge for the fugitives of the Ninanith and Nordiad. Yet even Círdan's kingdom was not immune to the forces of evil, and in 473 of the First Age, the Phallus was overrun and destroyed by Morgoth's forces and nearly all the elves killed. Círdan himself managed to escape, and with him he brought the young prince of the Nordor, Gilgalad. 
In this time of a certain intense struggle and hardship, Kieran's sacrifices and willingness to serve those who needed him continued to shine through. At the request of Torgon, King of Gondolin, Kieran sent ships to Valinor to seek the aid of the Valor. Ormo, the Valor of the Sea, requested of him a service to warn the proud city of Nogathwad of their doom unless they cast down their gates and their bridge. Neither of these ventures came to fruition. Nogathwad fell in 495 of the First Age, and all seven of the ships whom Kieran sent to Valinor were lost at sea. Such loss must have been the scourging to Kieran. He was doing naught but obeying the voices of those whom he served, be they Elf or Valor. Yet all his efforts and sacrifice seemed to bring nothing but sorrow and ruin. And yet with his wisdom and foresight, Kieran may perhaps have seen that even those things that seemed to turn to disaster had some gem of good in them. For although all seven of the ships were lost, not all seven of the marinos who manned those ships disappeared. One returned. His name was Fuonwe. By the mighty will of the Valor, Fuonwe was washed ashore at the exact place where a young man named Tor had just been given his own mission and vision from the Valor, Omo. Fuonwe that went on to lead Tor to the hidden city of Gondolin, and because Tor went to Gondolin, he met and married the Princess Idru of the city. And from that marriage came the birth of their son, the greatest Marino and one of the most important figures in the history of Middle-earth, Iardendil. When Gondolin fell at last to the forces of Morgoth, Thor, his wife and son, found refuge at the havens of Sirion with Círdan and his people. Círdan came to practically raise the child, and under his guidance and leadership, Iardendil learned the art of shipbuilding. From their hands came the ship, Vinglot and Kieran no doubt saw that this was the ship of the vision that he had been given so long ago. Perhaps it was because of his willingness to serve, his undying loyalty to all that was good and true and right, the sacrifices that he had made to help and protect so many of his ward, that Kieran was granted foreknowledge, surpassing that of any of the elves. For it was by his help and service that Iardendil was enabled to sail to Valinor, and there at last, to entreat the grace and help of the Valor, and thus the War of Wrath was won, and Morgoth was defeated. The fate of Middle-earth could very well have been said to have rested in the hands of a shipbuilder. Thus ended the First Age. The continents were shifted, and Círdan moved to drill by the sea, at the Great Havens, and continued to build ships. He was instrumental in building the vessels that conveyed the Edain to the Isle of Numenor, and later became friends with them, continuing his skills as a mentor to young Prince Alderion and teaching him the ways of the ships and the sea. His wisdom and foresight continued to offer itself as well. He warned against the making of the rings of power, and although his advice went unheeded, his wisdom was recognized when he was made guardian of one of the rings, Narya, the Ring of Fire. As the Second Age came to a close, he joined in the last alliance and helped to defeat Sauron, he, along with Lord Elrond, urged Isildur to throw the one ring taken from Sauron into the fires of Mount Doom, but Isildur refused. After the war of the Last Alliance, peace reigned in Middle-earth for about a thousand years. But when a shadow began to lengthen, the Valor sent the Estare, the whistles, to Arda. Círdan recognized in one of them, Gandalf the Grey, great destiny and wisdom, and he gifted G Gandalf with the ring Narya. Círdan said to Gandalf, Take this ring, master, for your labors will be heavy, but it will support you in the weariness you have taken upon yourself. For this is the ring of fire, and with it you may rekindle hearts in a world that grows chill. But as for me, my heart is with the sea, and I will drill by the grey shores until the last ship sails. I will await you. Círdan continued offering his help and service in the Angmar War, assisting the kings of the Dunedain, and sending a ship to try and come to the aid of the human king, Arthur This last venture proved to lost, however, as the king perished and the northern kingdoms of men fell. Círdan took control of one of the powerful scene stones, the Palantiri, left behind in the tower of Alosterion. In 3018 of the Third Age, Círdan sent an elf of the Havens, Gaudor, to Rivendell for the Council of Elrond. 
His deeds don't in war self are not explicitly known, but no doubt he used his skills of wisdom, foresight, as well as the location of his realm, to comfort and help all those he could, during this time of utmost importance and change in Middle Earth. When at last the war was ended and the Ring Bearers arrived at the Grey Haven to take ship into the west, Kieran himself came down to greet them. As they came to the gates, Kieran and the shipwright came forth to greet them. Very tall he was, and his beard was long, and he was grey and old, save that his eyes were keen as stars, and he looked at them and bowed, and said, All is now ready. And all indeed was now ready. Kieran had fulfilled that which he had been left behind on Middle Earth to, to do. He had brought comfort to many. He had served with undying loyalty those whom he had, was given to serve. He had offered his words of wisdom and his gift of foresight to those who needed such. He had sacrificed his own yearnings and desires to assure the continual existence and survival of others. And now, at last, his days of service were ended. When at last that time came, Kieran took the last ship into the west, to the undying lands, to live forever beneath the trees of light that his heart had longed to see for so long. He was over ten thousand years old, the oldest living elf on Middle Earth. He has served well, and he, of all elves of Arda, will enjoy his eternal reward. Thank you for joining with me today through the Ward of Arda. A very special shout out to our new Teleri Sea Elves member, Mr. Jones. Welcome, Mr. Jones, and thank you for joining us. Please like this video, subscribe to Shield Maidens, and join us again so we can explore more of Middle Earth together. Namani.